today is all about searches on Ancestry. Are you searching in the right ways to find the records that you are looking for? Are you searching wrong? Are you missing some tools and some things that could make a huge difference in your family history research? Are you aware of all of the different options that you have as you search? Today, I'm gonna to go over all of the information that you might need as you're searching for records on Ancestry. And I'm not talking hints here, I'm talking searching, as well as I'm gonna to touch on the card catalog. Now I have a handout for this video. I decided to go ahead and do a handout because there's so much information here. I thought if I were watching the video, you may not wanna to try to write it down. And so I thought it might be helpful for you to have a handout. You can access the handout if you're a member of Amy's Crew through the YouTube channel, be a YouTube member and be part of Amy's Crew, or you can purchase it on Etsy and the link to that is in the video description below. So just go into the description of the video and you'll see the link of how you can purchase that handout. I was in a class that Krista Cowan was doing talking about effective searches on Ancestry. She was talking about a number of things, but she started hitting on this topic. And there were a lot of people there that had been doing genealogy for 20 or 30 years. And I was really surprised at how many people aren't aware of some of the different things that you can do to make your searches more effective. And so I really wanted to do a very thorough video on this so that I can show you the different things that you can do. Now we're gonna be covering a lot of information. Some of it may not be in the handout because some things are just easier to show you, but there are also some things in the handout that I won't be able to cover today just for the sake of time in the video. So let's get to it. I'm Amy Cross, let's take your genealogy to the next level. I don't think people understand how many records there are in Ancestry. Ancestry has a ton of records and only 10% of them are going to show up in your hints. Yes, 10%. So that's not very many records. There's a whole lot more out there that you may not be finding because they're not showing up in your hints. So what do you do about it? How many records are out there? Well, let me give you some numbers. In 2021, at the end of 2021, Ancestry had 35 billion records and they added 5 billion records in 2022. This year, they are on track in 2023 to add another 15 billion records. Now, when we're talking billion records. We're not talking about different record groups. We're talking about individual records. So like every individual birth certificate is an individual record, but still 15 billion, that's a lot of records. So what are you missing? What are some of the things that you need to find? So the first thing that I want to talk about is what's in a record and what are some of the things that you need to be aware of? Whenever you are doing a search and you're finding a record, there's a couple of things that I want to point out to you. The first is that you have the record group right here, up here at the top, and then you have these different places where you can input information to get the record, okay? And then as you scroll down, you have source information here, and that tells you where that source came from and gives you a little bit more information about things that may be associated with this source and maybe where you can find some additional information. And then it goes into what's in that record. And if you go up here to the top, one of the other things that I think is kind of interesting is you also have some related data collections here, which can be really helpful to you. So I would definitely spend a little bit more time looking at this page because I think sometimes we neglect to do so. Now, when you find a record, this browse box right here is the image of the record if it is available. And if I click on that, then I'm going to see that picture and I can move around in the image to the different pages, either by moving these arrow keys here or by moving around this way. And I can get rid of this right here by doing that. That is one of the things that's really important. If you can look at the image, you always want to do that. But sometimes a record doesn't have an image, like in this record. This blank box tells you that they don't have an image. This is just an indexed record with just that basic information in it. Let's talk about effective searching. There's a few things that you can do to be a much more effective searcher. And there's a couple of different ways to search. And sometimes I don't think people recognize that. The first is when you're in your person page, whatever person that you're working on, you can go right up here to search, okay? And that search will populate the information that you have already obtained about that person into the search. So if I click on that, 
So here's the search for Amy Paston. And it's put some of the information in here that is already in her tree. But here we have Amy Paston. She was born in 1910 in California. She lived in San Francisco, female. Her father was Georgie Paston, mother Ama Paston, and her sister was Georgette. And so then it shows me the results that I'm going to find. I've got a 1920 census. I have yearbooks. I have this passenger list. Um, and this passenger list is in my hints. This makes a notation that this is in my hints. But these other records, this yearbook photo, is not in my hints, nor is this 1920 census. So this is that can be really helpful for you. So obviously right here I've got a bunch of city directories. If I keep scrolling down, I have another passenger list that was in my hints, another photograph, a marriage record that's in my hints, um, another photograph that was in my hints. But here I have a voting registration that was not in my hints. So you can see that a lot of records are populating in this search that were not in my hints. How does Ancestry sort these records? It looks at the information that I have provided and if I provided 10 facts, it's going to show records that connect with the majority of those facts. The more facts it connects with, the higher it will be on this search result. Now, I'm gonna come back to this and go into a little bit more detail, but I wanna show you another way you can for perform a search. I call this a clean search because when you use the search function here, it's not going to populate the information that you have in your tree. It's totally new and different. I use this a lot for census evaluations. So let's say I'm looking for the parents of Amy Paston, and so I want to know all of the people by the last name of Paston who resided in San Francisco, California. I'm just gonna look at San Francisco County and I want to know um, just everybody by the name of Paston, and then I'm gonna narrow this down a little bit more. Let me show you. So if I just click that, that's it. Sometimes less is more. If I just pick, click Paston and I put that area, then I'm looking at all of the different people that are Paston, or this person was indexed as Patton, but somebody says, nah, they're really Paston. So that's why you're seeing that. And so I'm seeing everybody with that surname Paston in the area. Now I can narrow this down a little further with these filters over here. And I wanna show you that really quickly. We're gonna talk a little bit more about some of the other filters. Let's say I didn't know who her parents were and I knew she resided in 1920 in San Francisco. So I wanna see all of the other people that maybe lived in that area. This is especially effective when you're doing research prior to 1850 to do kind of a census evaluation and look. The other time this is really helpful is if I wanna see if there's other people that may be being confused by if it's a common name. And I may have more than one individual who maybe they're getting messed up in trees, okay? So anyway, that's a clean search. And when you do that search, you have a number of different options. You can either look at all collections, census and voter lists, birth, marriage, death, immigration, public member trees, military records, the card catalog, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later, and if you wanna search for other Ancestry members. Regardless of which of these ways you search, either through this up here or through the person page, I wanna encourage you to think outside the box. You need to think a little bit about what are different ways that you can get the information that you need. I see too many people just click it once and think, ah, I'm not seeing anything, and end, when there's a whole lot more they can do. So what are some of those hints that are going to make a difference? When you're entering information in the search box, regardless of which way you're going about searching, okay, the thing that I want you to use is I want you to make sure you use their locations because it's gonna make a really big difference. So when you start typing something in, like San Francisco, okay, I want you to go down and we're starting to see San Francisco, San Francisco County, California, or San Francisco County. Here we've got some San Francisco's in Mexico and Minnesota. I wanna type it in the way Ancestry will recognize it. So I want you to use this drop down box. So I want to do that right there. Another thing I want you to think about when you're searching is experimenting with different things. You can search by just a first name. 
If you've narrowed down your area really small, like you're looking at a particular city or even county, and maybe you have an unusual name or maybe you don't have an unusual name, and you think that their last name may have been butchered either in the indexing process or by the enumerator, then you can just search by their first name. You can even search by ethnicity or age or I think we start to think that we can only do it in one way, but that is not true. There are multiple ways that you can go and you can experiment by just putting little bits and pieces of information in. Often less is more. So when you fill in a ton of information into the boxes, sometimes it can hinder your results. The other thing that's really kind of cool is Ancestry allows you to search with Boolean operators. Now, what is that? Boolean operators are the words and in capital letters, or, or not. Another thing that Ancestry does that I think is even more helpful is they allow the use of wildcards. Wildcards are the asterisk or the question mark. Let me give you an example. Let's say I'm looking for my Kinsley and it's spelled like all over the board. Maybe it's spelled K-U-E-N-Z-L-E, K-U-N-Z-L-E, K-U, there's just so many different ways that I've seen Kinsley spelled. So I could type K-U-N-Z and then I could put a star and then that will give me any name. I've got Coons and then, but it will keep going, Coonsman. So the star means any number of characters can be there. You can put a star in between letters. So that would mean, in this instance, it would mean K-U-N and then any number of letters with an I at the end. There's a lot of different names and different places that this can be very handy. If you're just wanting to replace one letter, you can use a question mark. For instance, um, my maiden name is Stevenson. I could do S-T-E star E-N-S-O-N and that would work for E-V-E-N-S-O-N or E-P-H-E-N-S-O-N or if maybe sometimes I'm having people spell it S-T-E-V-E-N-S-O-N or E-N, I can put the question mark there. So it's S-T-E-V-E-N-S question mark N. That will allow any letter to fit in between that S and N. One of the other things that I wanna note on a clean search, when you go down to like something like immigration and travel, they're going to give you options to enter into the search box that are different than you might see in others. They're gonna ask you an arrival or departure or origin, which can be really helpful when you're looking for passenger lists. So pay attention to that. So now let's talk a little bit more about using the search function within a person where it automatically populates that person information, because that's really handy. So if I'm in my person page and I click the search button here on the right, I'm going to get this search thing. Now, this is the information that it's pulled from what I have. This doesn't include everything that may be listed underneath that person, but a lot of times I need to mess with this a little bit. So I can click on this pencil right here, which allows me to edit the search. So I'm gonna go into Georgette Paston, my grandmother, Amy's sister, and I wanna show you an example of how this can really make a difference when you're searching for a marriage record. You'll see kind of what Ancestry does at the top. They put both of her known names. So Georgette was married to George Stevenson, and so they put her maiden name Paston and her married name Stevenson. And you'd think when Ancestry would be searching for other marriage records, I don't know, they'd figure it out, but it doesn't work. So what I do is I need to get rid of the Paston because if she were married again after George, she's not gonna, it's, she's not gonna be married under the name Paston in most instances. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And then I also need to go down here and I need to get rid of her parents because they have that name Paston in there and her sister. I wanna get rid of all sources of the name Paston. And then I can click search. So now I'm looking for Georgette Stevenson and I can narrow down the search by going here to one of these filters and we're gonna talk a little bit more about these in a minute. But I can narrow it down by clicking birth, marriage and death and, and clicking marriage and divorce. And now I can look and see whether or not there is another marriage for a Georgette Stevenson. That can really, really, really make a difference when you're looking for a marriage record to play around with that information in your search box. Now, one of the other things that's really kind of cool about the search box is that you have these sliding scales here from broad to exact. So you can say this place. Or you can say they lived somewhere around and, and it's broad, but I can force it by saying, I wanna go the country, the state and adjacent states, the state, 
the county and adjacent counties, the county or that place, San Francisco, San Francisco County. And then that would force that record as well. And when I hit apply, then all of a sudden I'm going to see different records. Now I'm only seeing one record and there's a reason for this. And this is actually a warning. I said she had to exactly be born in California. So if I'm looking for other records that don't ask or indicate where somebody was born, but they're records of an Amy pastor who lived in San Francisco, San Francisco County, California, they're not going to show up here. I'm only getting the census record because it was in San Francisco and it gave her birthplace as California. Now, if I take that slider off to broad and reapply the changes, you're going to see that it's going to make a difference. Now, all of a sudden, I'm seeing all of these other records that didn't have anything to do with her birthplace. Do you see what I mean? Sometimes less is more. You've got to be playing around with things. Another way to make those same changes are these little boxes here. When you open up the search box, I can do the same thing right here as well. I don't have to use that. And there's a couple of options here that are not in the slider. Like if you have, like you want her, her mother exactly to be Ama, I could click on that. So that's some really big helps when you're making your searches. And again, experiment. So I want to talk more about these filters now. When you get your search page right here, if you scroll down, you're going to see a bunch of filters right in here. And these are pretty cool. Um, you have, I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up because at the top is my favorite. So you have the image subject. These are about images. If I click anywhere that there's this um, sideways arrow, there's going to be more. So if I click on this, it's I'm just now changing my results to images that have people in them. And I can even narrow it down further to groups or individuals. All right. But let's say I'm looking for a record date. If I choose 1900, then I'm going to have the opportunity to again, narrow it down by decade. So I can look for these two things. I can look for people in, in the 1950s. And now I've narrowed down my results even further. When I want to take one of those filters off, I just click the X and then I'm no longer filtering all of my results by that particular fact, by that date or by an image or something like that. I can also narrow it down by location. I can go to North America. I can go to the United States, Canada, Cuba. I can go to the state and then I can even narrow it down further to county and even city. Okay. In some instances. So that's helpful. Now this is telling me how many records I have for an Amy Paston in different states in the United States, 662 in California, 384 in South Carolina, and the number will go down as I go further down, okay? So now let's get into the good stuff. So if I want to find somebody, let's say I had found Amy in the 1910 and 1930 census, and I really wanted to find her in 1920, and it wasn't here, it wasn't showing up for me so easily. So I can go here to census and voter lists, and I can go to 1920s, and now it's going to give me that. Now I can narrow it down even further. Here I have the California U.S. voter registrations. I have a bunch of England records, and she wasn't in England, but I could also click the 1920 federal census here. There's 36 possibilities for that. Now, another way I could get rid of these England records is go up here to this focus and I could focus on the United States. I could do it that way, or I could also use the record location down here. There's a couple of ways to do that. So if I click on that 1920 census, it's going to narrow it down and I'm just going to see possibilities for her in the 1920 census. And here's that, this is her and here's some others. We don't really have another good option here. But this can be really helpful when you're looking for somebody in a census record. But I'd also like to point out one other thing here. As you can see here, we have her here in the 1920 census, but then we have a bunch of voter registration lists. We have this one in 32, this one in 36, this one in 40, this one in 38, this one in 33, and then this is her mom. 
So this is the only one that is in her hints. Do you see it says it's right here in your hints. These other four are not, nor is this 1920 census in her hints. No idea why. So that's something that's really important to keep in mind when you're looking at these records. There's so much more that's here than you're going to find in your hints. So let's look at some of these other record groups. We can also narrow it down to birth, marriage, and death. This has been really effective for me when I want to find somebody in like at find a grave. Sometimes it's not coming up in hints. Now find a grave records can come up in hints, but sometimes they don't. And this is my quick fix. I'll do a search like this. I'll hit death, bur burial and cemetery. And then I'm going to look down here and I want to go to the find a grave. Okay. And I'll click on that. And then Amy was cremated. So she's not going to be found in a cemetery. But um, this will give me all of the find a grave records for somebody that they think may be my person. And I can find people so fast this way. Military is also really interesting if you have somebody that may have served in the military. There's all kinds of records that this will point out to you from pension records to disciplinary actions. These types of records are usually going to be so far down on your general search results, you're never going to see them. So you have to go through these processes and look more specifically for what you're hoping to find. Immigration. Now, it's really interesting. I click on immigration here, and when I go back up to this edit the search, now all of a sudden I have that arrival and departure information I can add in. This is another way to go about that. So once you narrow down your search here, it might change the options that you have in your search box above. And you can focus to passenger list, crew list, citizenship records. There's a lot of different things that you can kind of narrow in on. Newspapers and periodicals, I sometimes find things there that are so far down in search results. Wonderful, same is true with pictures. Directories and member lists is another great place to go. Um, this includes the city and area directories, society and employment directories, school lists and yearbooks. This is a great way to find those yearbook photos if they're not coming up for you. And then telephone directories. So you can go there and you can go through your filters and you can go directly to where you want to go. And then the last one that's like one of my favorites here is the court, land, wills, and financial. These really don't often come up initially. And so if you're looking for wills and guardian records, you can just go drill right into that. Tax lists, land records, and then other court records. And within the court, government, and um, criminal records are those social security application claims. If you're having a hard time finding that and you think you ought to be finding it. But even we have like a Oregon motor vehicle registration. So many things that I would not think I might find for my person that I might find here. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about family trees. I'm not a big fan of people adopting family trees. Family trees are often wrong on Ancestry. And so if you want to look at them and see what sources they used and see if they have any photographs and stuff like that, great. But be really careful about adopting that information. It may not be correct. But one of the things that I think is kind of interesting is it's here, and I, I think this may be one of the only places that you can really get this information by searching for an individual. You're going to find both public and private member trees. Now, private member trees are trees that somebody has made private. They don't want everybody else to have access to them. But a lot of times if you contact somebody, particularly if you try to share information with them, they're more than happy to allow access to their tree because you're a family member and they wanna share that information with you. But this is a little bit confusing because here in, in this result, I'm seeing I have Amy Paston, and then I see Georgette Paston. So that can be a little confusing, but what you need to look at is Amy Paston, who has the same information that is in my tree, which is where I'm at right now. Um, she's found in 12 trees. So right here, I can click view all, and then that will allow me to see all of the trees that has Amy Paston in them. And right here, you can see a tree that it says contact the tree owner, and I can click on that, and it will give me the opportunity to contact this person who has a tree with Amy Paston in it, born at the same time. She only has one attached record and two sources, but she has 7, 000, over 7,000 people in her tree. She might be somebody that might be a great person for me to make contact with. There's one thing in this search feature when you're doing a person search 
that I think so many people don't understand and it really makes a big difference. Um, if you go down here, you see your initial stuff, you see somebody else's tree there that she's in. It shows me the records that I already have attached to her in the tree. Now, if I were to click this, it would make it go away, but don't leave it open because you want to be able to see that. You want to see what records you already have her in. But there's a smart search feature. They're focusing you on new information. So when this is active, when the smart search is active, like it is right now, they're not going to show me any other records for an Amy Paston in the 1910 U.S. Federal Census. I'm, 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 they've been eliminated. They're not going to give me any more. And the risk with that is if you have somebody that may be getting confused, it, it stops you from seeing whether or not you have other people that may be have the same name, maybe even live in the same city. Maybe we're born within a few years of one another. I can't tell you how often I find that to be the case. And hints will drive them down one place and they never have the opportunity to realize that maybe there's something else as a possibility here. So how do you deal with it? You can take it off, click on this, and it says they recommend active, smart filtering removes results that you've already saved, hints that you've ignored, results that almost ever, you know, give you anything. Well, I don't want you to make that decision for me. So I'm going to take that off. Now it's inactive. Now you'll see that the two records that are already saved, they're still here, are, are, are showing up again. And, and it has a notation that this record was saved in my tree. Now this is really helpful when you're searching somebody that has a very common name. So this is my grandfather, George William Stevenson. Here, I've done a search for him. I have him in the 1930 and 1940 census. This smart filtering is active and I want to remove it. Now I'm having other possibilities that may show. Now see, this is an example. Here we have a George W. Stevenson who was born in Oregon in the 1950 census in San Gabriel, Los Angeles, California. Here's a George Stevenson that was born in the United States. It doesn't specify what state. He resided in Los Angeles, Los Angeles County, California. I, it's not showing me their births, but their births might be very similar. And if I narrowed with the filters, if I narrowed things down further, let's dive in this a little bit deeper. Let's narrow it down and look in 1950. And I see my George Stevenson. I see this other one. Here's another one that was born in Illinois, a George W. Stevenson, um, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, California. So I have three possibilities. Now, if I look at these records, I can see the age. This one's 37. This one is 35. They're just two years apart in age and census records can be off. This one is 33. So these three men are close in age. And by removing that active filtering, I'm having the opportunity to kind of dive into this a little deeper and make sure I'm not getting people messed up. So now let's go into the card catalog because like I talked about at the very beginning of the video, only 10% of records are going to show up in hints and not all records are even going to show up through this search function. Only indexed records will show up this way but there may be more. And so the best way to go to the card, card catalog is to go up here to search and to go down here to card catalog. And this will take you to the card catalog. Now the card catalog is going to sort initially by the date added. You can change that to collection title and other things. This just has everything that Ancestry has. Now I've done an entire other video on how to navigate the card catalog because it's not easy. It's actually kind of frustrating to me and a lot of people. So if you want to watch that video, a link to that video is going to be at the end of this video and, or I'll also put a link to it in the description of the video below. So the card catalog, you can search by title or keywords, but there's a couple of things that I want to add about the card catalog. When you're searching in the card catalog, and let's say I want to look at federal census records. I can just type in federal census. And so now I'm seeing, and I can go to a record group. Now, one of the advantages of this is sometimes maybe you think that your person should ought to be in some kind of a record, but you're not finding them. 
well, does Ancestry even have that record group? So you can go into the card catalog and you can look and see, do they have tax records for Los Angeles County in 1920? Maybe they don't have it. So maybe the reason you're not finding it is it's not there to be found. Um, but one of the other things that you can do, if you do find it, then you can do kind of a clean search this way. And you can put in the information, but one of the other interesting things is they're gonna populate this with specific questions that were just in that census. So you could list by grade completed. You could look up all kinds of information um, if you know it. Now again, less is oftentimes more, but this can give you the opportunity to do kind of funky searches based on things that maybe you know about somebody and you're not finding them. Maybe their name was likely butchered in that census record. And maybe you might find them in one of these other things like a father's birthplace or a mother's birth birthplace that you're not gonna find them any other way. This is really a kind of a cool thing that a lot of people don't know about. I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope that this has been able to help you clue into searches that maybe you haven't t attempted before, giving you some tricks and hints to better search for individuals in your family tree and have more success in those searches. I, again, if you want the handout, you can get a hold of that information below. And here is the video that I mentioned earlier on searching the catalog effectively. Have a great day.